What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we will be talking about the importance of using edge lights. I have Madi back in the studio with me today. We are super excited to get into this content, so let's hop right in. The first thing that I'm going to show you all today is how to use your edge light with a two light setup. I have my key light here, which is a huge, big seven foot umbrella, and it's in the Rembrandt position. So the first test shot that I'm going to take is going to be of Madi with just my one light on. So right now I only have my A light on. And my camera settings are currently F8. I'm at a shutter speed of 1 250th and my ISO is at 100. So you're just gonna look straight at me. Three, two. And as you can see, using that big umbrella, we are getting a nice bit of coverage on Madi's right side. But in order to bring this portrait to life, to give it a little bit more juice, I am now going to add in my C light. And my C light is simply an edge light that is set up across from my key. It's right to the edge of Madi's left side. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow a little more pop and bring her off of that backdrop. So I'm gonna take another test shot. My settings have not changed and I do have my edge light metered to five, six. So it is a two to one. So here we go. Three, two. And now what we're gonna get is a lot more pop. So we're adding that little flare to the back of her. And as you can see, we're using a white backdrop. So our big umbrella is giving that white backdrop a little bit of a pop. But when you add in that edge, it then brings Madi off of the backdrop. So let's take a couple more shots. We'll do about five, six clicks here where you're just gonna kind of move around so we can show how dynamic this lighting setup can be. Three, two. Nice, three, two. Good, three, two. I'm gonna come close. Three, two. Let's do some where you're looking off this way. I'm gonna go wide here. Three, two, three, two. Do one more medium. Let's look towards your key light. Three, two. Awesome. So in using this setup, what it allows for is your model can have a little bit more freedom as opposed to just using the one Rembrandt light because there is gonna be that edge on this side. So even when she turns to her left, we're still gonna get a little bit of light on her face and it won't be so dramatic as if she just had the one light. So the next thing that we're gonna go over is how to do this with three lights. A lot of you are very familiar with the key plus fill and I have added a super large softbox for my fill light. This is gonna fill in her left side and it is metered to F4. So this is a four to one lighting setup. Let me first take a test shot with just our two lights on. So why are you gonna look straight at me? Yeah, three, two. And we have a decent amount of coverage, right? This is a four to one lighting setup, so it's nothing super crazy, but it is a little bit flat. So what I'm gonna do is introduce a three point lighting, which is one of the most basic lighting setups that we can introduce. And I'm going to turn my C light back on. So we're gonna give that edge light a turn back on, and it is still going to be two to one. So the edge light is metered to five, six, and we're still gonna keep this fill light to 4.0, okay? Because I don't want it to be super high key, still wanna keep a little bit of shadow definition, but now we're gonna take a test shot here with our new rim light turned on. Three, two. And as you can see, even subtly, it starts to bring that rim slash edge to the right shoulder. Again, we're gonna take about five or six clicks here just to show what this setup can do. And every time I click, I kinda want very dramatic differences. You can even give me profile from left to right. I'll do about six or seven clicks here. Three, two, three, two. Nice, come close. Three, two, perfect. Three, two, do a few wide. Three, two, three, two. And I'll do two more here. Good, three, two. Last one, three, two. Now the cool thing about when you do this setup is your key and your fill are gonna mix. That's just how it happens. Organically, they are gonna come together. But when you're using that edge light and you're really bringing it in, what that's gonna allow you to do is pop that subject off of the background even more. This is very useful for something like an e-commerce or you're doing like some commercial work where they really want the subject to pop out from the screen and not the images to be a little too flat. Now let me show you how to take the edge lights up just another notch. You know we like to get our dramatic setup in. So what I'm gonna do now, I have two edge lights set up on both sides of Madi. And these are 300 watt strobes, so all I like to do is just turn them all the way up to 100%. So I'm at one over one for both strobes. However, what I'm trying to do 
is line up this left edge of the light with her shoulder. So I do want it to shoot a little bit past her shoulder to give like a tiny bit of a reach around. So I'm lining up this left edge right at her left shoulder. And what that's gonna do for me, I'm gonna show you a shot with just the two key lights on because these have now become my key lights. And all I'm trying to do, so you'll stand there and just look straight at me. Yep, three, two. All I am trying to do is create like a super edge, right? So that edge is going to wrap a little bit around the shoulders. I don't necessarily want it coming onto her face, so to speak, just a little bit, but it's gonna give like a super edge and it's gonna be very glowy behind her and it's gonna help our backdrop drop off to a little bit of like a gray gradient. Now, here's where the third light comes in. And it's going to be, again, our big, huge soft box. I'm sorry, our big, huge umbrella. And this is going to act as our fill. Now, I just mentioned that these are my key lights and they are turned all the way up. I have this fill light metered to about f5.6, so I'm still shooting at f8. And this is metered to about f5.6. It is something that you're gonna wanna dial in to taste. And I personally like it to be at least about one stop under my key lights. So now, when I turn this light on, what it's gonna do, it's gonna give us a little more illumination of the face. Now we're gonna bring up those shadows so we get something that looks a little like this. Three, two. And with the addition of now bringing in our fill light, we've kind of risen up the shadows in this image. And what that allows us to do is kind of play around with our fill intensity. If you want it to be a more dramatic portrait, like you want the edge lights to shine through a whole lot more, all you would do is just take this down a little bit. So I'll take it down one stop and see how I like it. It's not generally how I would shoot it, but for the sake of demonstration, three, two, and now as we take this down an entire stop, the portrait becomes that much more dramatic. Now what I'm gonna do is take it back up a stop to where I would normally shoot it. And I'm just gonna have Madi move around. We're gonna do about five to 10 clicks just to show you all the versatility of this lighting setup. So we're gonna do about 10 clicks. Just get it moving. You don't have to stay with me the whole time. Three, two, nice. Three, two, nice. Let me go to 50, get some wides here. Cool. Three, two. Three, two, nice, I'm coming close. Sweet, I love that. Three, two, beautiful. Three, two, we get two more here. Coming super close. Three, two, last one. Three, two, good. Now what I love most about this lighting setup, especially when you get into those close shots, is just how it makes the hair look. Notice she has like a, blonde, brown, ombre thing kind of going on, and the edge lights really allow that hair to shine through. Now, if you have someone with darker hair, of course, you can turn your edge lights up a little bit more. And if you have someone with like a super blonde, like a, like a, almost like a white type of hair, you can turn the edge lights down a little bit. And it is gonna differ a little based on skin tone. But this is probably my favorite way to utilize edge lights to make a little bit more of a dramatic portrait. These are actually insane. I think my favorite is probably these close-ups because like look at the skin is just glowing like you said with the hair the so you detail. like the ones with the edge lights in the back are just super yeah super this intense. is stunning too like the it just highlights all the makeup and yeah features love that i even like the dark in the background honestly yeah, moody works too but that that in this last it's just your posing, honestly. Lighting There's is not much to do with the lighting, to be honest. I think it's the makeup, yeah, honestly. It's the makeup, posing, fit, all of yeah, it. Yeah, I definitely like those better than these okay. uh, brighter ones at the beginning. Yeah. That's just my vibe. Okay. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for today's tutorial. What I really want you to take away from this is don't be afraid to experiment with lights that are not just in front of your subject. Those edge lights are probably one of the best things that you can have in your toolbox, and it will also give you such an ability to mix up the portraits for your clients. This is also something that you can toggle on and off throughout the session. That's something that I'm known to do to really give some variety to using the same outfit. Say you're shooting someone and they only have one fit, you being able to come in and utilize different lighting setups with that one outfit can bring focus to different parts of the fit and also give your clients some options in post when it comes to them choosing the edits as they want. I wanna give a huge shout out to Madi for coming through to the channel. I think this is time number three. Madi, where can the people find you? You can find me at 
on Instagram at bby.marii. You know it's going to be right here, right? Spell it correctly. I'm also going to have it linked in the bio. Thank you all again. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you in the next video.